Hi everybody, I'm Kimmy, and I'm playing the most impossible game. I'm trying to get this tiny little metal ball all the way around here, and through here, and around this little thingy over here, and under this little thingamabob, and ugh, it's so hard. So far I keep getting stuck. I've gotten stuck here, and here, and here. But will I give up? Never. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's what I was taught. It's my responsibility. Responsibility means showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. So let's do this. Trying again. Okay, uh, over here. Ugh. Okay, fine. Now I give up. I tried again and it didn't work. I tried so hard. I don't want to play this anymore. I don't want to do it if it's hard. I want to do something else. <sighs> okay, this can't be right. I shouldn't quit doing something just because it's hard. I'd never get anything done if I did that. Okay, let's do this. I'm trying one more time. Ha, yes, I did it. And that's all because I whined and complained about how hard it was, huh? Yeah, that's gotta be it, right? Oh, no, that's not it? Yeah, you're right. Now that I think about it, the whining and complaining didn't really help at all. What did help was something that we're learning about in today's Big God Story. But first, let's play a game, hopefully without less whining and complaining. and way less frustrating than my pinball game. And I didn't whine or complain at all. And now I think my heart is in a better place to worship and learn about God. I've got my Bible and my notebook ready, and I can't wait to hear about today's big God story. Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul. Got a reason for this joy I can't control. I want to sing. This love I know
say, I just want to say. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, Chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. King Solomon was young when he became ruler of Israel after his father David. One night, God spoke to him in a dream. Ask for anything you want me to give you. What? Solomon had just been given the greatest gift of all time. He could have asked for anything. Unlimited money, the power to defeat all of his enemies, or even to be the best loved, longest living king of all time. Instead, though, Solomon made a different ask. Lord, you have now made me king, but I'm only a little child. I don't know how to carry out my duties, so give me a heart that understands. Then I can rule over your people. I can tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Solomon asked for wisdom, and God gave it to him. In fact, Solomon became known as the wisest man to ever live. Over the course of his life, he shared many wise sayings that were later recorded in the book of Proverbs. These sayings are to help people do what is just and fair, to help young people learn wisdom. Only fools refuse to listen and learn. The wisdom recorded in Proverbs gives godly advice about nearly everything, from using words wisely to staying away from trouble. But the most famous passages talk about the value of hard work. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. When was the last time you paid attention to an ant, other than the one that you were gonna squash on the kitchen floor? To better understand what Solomon means about work, well, I think it's time we take a closer look. Did you know that there are about one million ants on Earth for every single human? Yikes! My skin is crawling right now. But just look at how amazing these little guys are. Like Solomon said, nobody lays out a set of rules for them. Nobody offers them an allowance or more screen time if they finish their work. God made them in such an incredible way that they stick with it and get the job done. In fact, some ants can lift up to 50 times their own weight. If you were that strong, you could lift an entire car. And ants use that super strength to store up their food, just like we see in Proverbs. And ants also work smart. They leave a special trail of chemicals, called pheromones, that tells them where they've been so they don't get lost or repeat themselves. And ants are incredibly creative. They actually farm aphids in order to have a constant supply of the honeydew aphids release. And the ant's creativity doesn't stop there. In times of flooding, ants will even protect the queen by forming a lifeboat with their own bodies. Just like Solomon reminds us, ants do whatever it takes to gather up the food they need and to protect their colony. They know how to get the job done, and that's with only about 250,000 brain cells. But you? God made you with 10 million brain cells. He's given you everything you need to work strong, smart, and creatively. And because God has given us so much, there's so much more we can do. In the New Testament, Luke records some of Jesus' words. Much will be required of everyone who has been given much. You are creative and strong. You have a brain that works like no one else's. You are determined. And most of all, you are created in God's image. That means that you can work hard at whatever it takes to show love to God and the people He's made. Sometimes that might look like helping raise funds to provide clean water for kids on the other side of the world. Sometimes that might look like cleaning your room before your mom has to remind you five times. Or working hard to help your little sister to build an epic Lego palace. Whatever your work, Remember Solomon's wisdom. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it
It stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. Be wise, work hard. God has given you everything you need to follow through. friends, I get it. Work is hard. Homework can be hard. Chores can be hard. Our responsibilities can be hard. But if we don't work, nothing will ever get done. Think about it. If the ant didn't work, he wouldn't have any food stored up for the winter. We actually need work. Plus, think about Jesus. He gave us an example of how to love and serve others, and he always did it gladly, working with all of his heart. When we work, we should do it with a good attitude like we're working for God. We shouldn't whine or complain when someone asks us to do something that's hard or boring. In fact, we could choose to work hard even before someone asks. Think of work like it's a mission. Like when your mom asks you to clean your room or something, instead of whining, ugh, it's so hard. Respond with, let's do this, and then get the job done. You'll finish your work faster, and you'll probably have a better time doing it too. So here's the rule for life to remember today. Work hard. When you work, put your heart into it. It'll feel good to accomplish something. And when you play, you can put your heart into that too. Yes, mission accomplished. So friends, I'd love to pray for you today and ask God to give you a heart that responds happily to work. Hold out your hands like this. Friends, may the Holy Spirit give you joyful, responsible hearts that work hard to love God and love others. May he fill you with wisdom like Solomon. May you be willing to work hard to do the right thing. May God continue to give you everything you need to follow through, and may you feel his grace and love when you have a hard time. And when you need help, may you rely on him and turn to him, remembering that he loves you and wants what's best for you. Amen. Have a great week, friends. We'll see you next time to learn more about God, his big story, and the rules for life. Bye.